We've all heard it before. A girl who sleeps around is a slut, but a guy who sleeps around is a stud. And there are a lot of people who think that this is an unfair double standard. In this video, I'm gonna talk about why it's not a double standard and what the true double standards in dating actually are. Stay tuned. I mean, there's such a double standard. If you're a guy and you're doing it, thumbs up, high five. If you're a girl and you're doing it, you're a slut. The last time I checked, it took two people to have sex so two people doing the exact same thing at the exact same time have two totally different stereotypes, which is total BS and kind of sucks for the girl. That was Jacqueline Glenn complaining about this supposed double standard. The only reason why people think that this is a double standard is because people think that men and women are exactly the same in every facet of life and that gender is just a social construct. This may come as a shock to people like Jacqueline Glenn here, but men and women are very different and how men and women view sex is extremely different. So this is not a double standard, it's a fact. Let's first address the part about the guy who sleeps around being called a stud. Let's face it, the only types of guys who get to sleep around are studs. Your average Joe just doesn't get to do that. If you are the type of guy who can easily sleep around, then you are by definition a stud. Guys by nature compete for girls. Men are the ones who really need to work on themselves, hit the gym, make good money, hit the genetic jackpot, you name it, the guy has to do it. Men are human doings. Meanwhile, on the flip side, women are human beings. All they have to do is exist. So let's now address the part about the women sleeping around being cold. A woman has no problem getting a man. Actually, it's super easy, barely an inconvenience. All she has to do is look halfway decent, and that's literally it. For a woman, the dating world is like shopping. For men, it's like a job interview. So of course, studs and s are viewed much differently. Sleeping around is effortless for the vast majority of women. They don't have to do a thing. Why applaud something so easy? But only the top 20% of men have a relatively easy time sleeping around. The other 80% of men have to put in so much time and effort into competing for the bottom 20% of women. It's hard for a guy to be a stud. Like, it's hard for a guy to get laid. Like, he's gotta put work in. For a girl, you just gotta be there. Like, girls, we don't do anything. Like, we get approached by guys. We're the ones who, like, the guys come up to, and they're the ones who spit their game. Guys, they put so much effort into it. Like, you know, for a guy who is considered to be a stud, or, like, it's a lot of girls, you know, he takes really good care of himself. His hair is always on point. He always got, like, a nice wardrobe going on. He's, like, got a nice body because he hits the gym all the time. And then, like, you know, he figures out how to talk to girls, which is like, kind of like a trial and error thing because it's different for everybody. You can't just be like, oh, well, dude, this is what you say. No, that does not work. It is different for everyone. So, like, it, it takes a lot of effort for a guy to pick a girl up and to get laid or to get her attention, period. Because us girls, we are shallow babies. Not said. Here are a couple of issues that many guys would have about settling with a girl who has slept around. The biggest issue is one of trust. Men who are aware of a woman's promiscuous past would be unable to trust her. Men don't like the idea of having a child with a woman who has slept around before, because the paternity of the child would be in question. Is he really the father? There's another reason why it makes no sense for a man to settle down with a girl who had a promiscuous past. And to help explain this, I like to use what I call the chili analogy. So say a girl opens up a chili stand and she's told by all her friends, you only live once. It's a good business idea to give away free cups of chili while it's nice and hot. That will draw in some quality customers. So then she goes out of her way to go up to some people and gives away free cups of hot chili. After a while, she realizes she can't do this anymore. Maybe this wasn't the best business move after all. So now she goes back to her stand and decides to start selling the chili for money. But by now, the chili has gone a little cold. It's not as hot as it used to be. Nevertheless, she expects some people to stand in line to buy a cold cup of chili. I think a lot of people would be like, hang on a second, why should I wait in line to pay for a cold cup of chili when you went up to other people and gave them hot cups of chili for free? For those who don't get this analogy by now, the girl's friends telling her that this is a good business idea represents modern feminism in the mainstream media saying that female promiscuity is empowering. The chili represents sex. The fact that it's hot represents her youth, when her SMV is at its peak, and the fact that she's going up to the guy and giving it away for free represents the hookup culture that we have today. The people to whom she gave away the free cups of chili represent the Chads and Tyrones. The cold chili represents the woman's SMV after she has aged and after she has had all kinds of pipe ran through her. 
And the fact that there's now a line and the customers have to pay represents the man's commitment and the hoops that he now has to go through to get with her. So another way of saying this is, why should a guy commit to a girl who has given up the good so freely and easily before? Why should the guy give the girl the best years of his life when she didn't want him during the best years of her life? Another thing to keep in mind about the dating market is that women have two different categories for men, just like men have two different categories for women. The women's two categories for men are the alpha chad and the beta provider. The alpha chads are the guys who she is actually attracted to, the guys to whom she gave free hot cups of chili, while the beta providers are the types of guys she settles with because her SMV has plummeted. These are the guys she makes wait in line to pay for a cold cup of chili. On the flip side, in the man's eyes, the two categories of women are the hit it and quit it type, then there's the marriage material. If you're the type of girl who has a high body count and a promiscuous past, then you are in the hit it and quit it category. If you remain chaste, or at the very least, you only had sex with maybe one or two partners, but they were part of long-term committed relationships where you really got to know the guy first, then you are more likely to fall into the marriage material category. But in this day and age, fewer and fewer women fall into this latter category. And by being a girl who hasn't slept around and never had a one night fling, you really set yourself apart from the competition. Now to anybody who thinks, OMG, this is such an antiquated way of thinking. What you're saying is so misogynistic. I have yet another analogy for you. This is in regard to how men and women view high body counts for the opposite sex. This will also help explain why this whole stud versus slut thing really isn't a double standard at all. This analogy is going to use a job resume. Now on a resume, there could be many red flags that an employer might see. This analogy will look at two of these red flags. One red flag an employer may see is job gaps, where you hadn't had a job for a long time. The other red flag is job hopping, where you worked at one job for a short period of time, then moved on to another job for another short period of time, and so on. A woman views a man who has a low or non-existent body count as inexperienced and undesirable, in much the same way a potential employer will view a job candidate who has job gaps in his resume. Why did no one else hire him? Why should I? Then the job gap gets bigger and gets more difficult to close. Meanwhile, a man with a high body count is like a job candidate with no job gaps in his employment history. He is experienced. He's clearly in demand, and therefore more desired by the potential employer. Now let's flip the script. A woman with a high body count is like a candidate who has been job hopping. When an employer sees you are with one company for a little while, then another, then another, and so forth, the employer is going to obviously have doubts about whether you're going to leave their company after a short while too. But a woman with a low body count is like a job candidate that may have had only one or two jobs in the past, but they stayed at their previous jobs for many years. You feminists out there can whine all you want about how this is unfair, but at the end of the day, this is how men and women operate. You can't change human nature. Just deal with it. Given that my channel is about men's issues, I know that I don't have very many female viewers. But if there are any females watching this video who has not engaged in the current hookup culture but has thought about it, then I implore you to unthink it, for your own sake. And if you won't take my advice, maybe you'll listen to a girl who has gone through the whole phase herself and regretted it. She learned the hard way that it was a bad move. If you learn it the easy way and never have a hoe phase in the first place, the better off you'll be. This is a Reddit post from a 23 year old female who talked about how she went through her hoe phase and how she regretted it. In 2019, my ex-boyfriend and I had broken up after being in a relationship for three years. I'm 23 and he was the only guy I've ever dated or slept with, and I was always the relationship type. I took a little break from dating and focused on my final year of college, but I eventually decided to get on Tinder since it's the most popular dating app. Obviously, I made it clear I wanted something serious, so I weeded out the guys that just wanted to hook up. I went on two dates, but nothing emerged from that. Of course not. You're on Tinder. Everybody's looking for a hookup. If you're looking for something serious, you're barking up the wrong tree. Before the start of summer 2019, some of my girlfriends told me I should have a hoe phase, since I'd only been with one guy. They told me it would be a great way to explore and have fun while I'm still young before I eventually settled down with a good guy later on. See the implication here? If you're that good guy she settles for, you're not the fun. The fun was the guy she was attracted to during her 20s. She's just settling for you, the good guy, because she has no other choice. This is the dual dating strategy, folks. Hook up with the alpha chads now while you're young and in your sexual prime. Give them all your free hot cups of chili. Then when you've had your fun, find a beta sucker who'll take Chad's leftovers. Make him pay for a cold cup of chili. This strategy may sound nice for you girls, but can you understand why that good guy that you want to settle down with later on isn't jumping at this chance with enthusiasm? I'm not opposed to it at all. Well, you should be. I just never imagined myself doing it. But since dating wasn't working out with me, I decided to give it a try. 
I'd seen on all sorts of social media where women my age were promoting women's freedom to sleep around and enjoy themselves without being judged, as part of the modern women empowerment. I even went on Reddit for people who asked the same question and most people answered, you should do whatever you want to do and not be judged. Here's the thing, you can't have it both ways. You can't just say we can do what we want and also not be judged. Yes, do what you want, but other people are going to think whatever they want about you. And that's fine as well. Or women can sleep around casually just like men. Well, first of all, what they really mean to say is sleep around like the top 20% of men. Definitely not all men. Secondly, yes, you women feel free to be a hoe all you want if that's what you feel like doing. But don't expect anyone to want to settle down with you later on. Look at it this way, ladies. In your 20s, you hold the power. Use it wisely. You control whether or not you want to sleep around, and you have the choice on who you want to sleep with and who you don't. But you also have to realize that after your 20s are over, the power starts moving out of your hands. The man will then have the power of who he wants to be in a committed relationship with. Just like you had the power to choose the alpha chad over the average joe during your best years, the man will later on, during his best years, have the power to choose to marry a girl who didn't have a hoe phase over a hidden and quit it girl who did. I thought it would be inspirational. She thought it was inspirational to be a hoe? Well, teach her own, I guess. So I decided I wanted to try it out. From the summer of 2019 up until the end of 2020, I embarked on my hoe phase and started to become less picky on Tinder. I ended up sleeping with a lot of guys in that time. I made sure to use protection with most of the guys. Yeah, most, not all. Looking back at it, I honestly do not understand why this was praised by other women. It was just a bunch of bad hookups, manipulative guys, some of which were cheating on their girlfriends and being ghosted the morning after hooking up. I feel naive thinking before that the hoe phase would be filled with mind-blowing orgasms from super hot guys that are chill and respectful. I feel empty and not at all empowered. And I felt more used than anything. I wasted all those nights showering and getting ready for D appointments, making sure I'm looking good, only to have to drive over to the guy's place for a disappointing night. In fairness, I was using sex as a way to cope through my final year of college and my first year working a full-time job. It was a way to make me feel less stressed, but it was barely a temporary fix. I stopped my phase near the end of 2020 and I decided I wanted to start dating seriously. But the problem now is when the topic of my past comes up. It's not that the guys immediately ask about my past, but eventually when you're dating, it starts to get into that topic. I'm an honest person and I tell them the truth, but unfortunately they get intimidated by my abnormally high number. I believe the word you're looking for is disgusted, not intimidated. I feel like the whole hoe phase is a big mistake. Not only did I feel used and empty after a whole year of that, I feel I wasted my time trying to look presentable for guys who would end up ghosting me, and then have to deal with the consequences about having slept around, guys getting intimidated. Again, the word is appalled, not intimidated. But yeah, you're damaged goods now. You learned this lesson the hard way. The whole phase wasn't worth it at the time, and it had bad consequences for you after your phase was over. But it's never really over now, is it? Now, any guy you try to meet and knows about your past is always going to think, well, you gave up the good so readily before, and you didn't need any commitment from any of those guys. So how come I just don't get the goods for free? Why do I have to commit to you to get some action after your best years are over? The advice I've seen given to others with the same issue are mainly, oh, he's not worth it, a guy shouldn't be bothered by your past, or a good guy shouldn't think of you different because of your past. But that's the thing, people can say a guy shouldn't judge a girl for that reason, and that eventually I'll find one who won't care, but that's not reality. A lot of guys do care, but I don't think that makes them wrong. I feel like a hypocrite to think otherwise, because I'm pretty sure I'd feel concerned if a guy I was dating had been with an insanely high number of girls. I regret my decision to listen to my friends and social media talking about women empowerment. Maybe other girls have had amazing experiences, but I feel terrible. I don't feel I benefited from the experience. If anything, it was all those Tinder guys that gained a quick nut for themselves. Exactly. The only people who benefit on these apps are the top 20% of guys. As far as they're concerned, they got theirs, so they're happy. But women won't be. The guys they hooked up with will obviously not want to commit to them because they have no reason to. Just like you hooked up with him at the drop of a hat, he has a whole bunch of other girls who are ready and willing to do the same. You're just another notch on his bedpost. But as per usual, girls never look at anything from a man's perspective. All they see is, hey, he was an attractive guy and I gave him sex, why won't he commit to me? And it's a complete mystery to you, even though it should be common sense. To make sure that the guy really wants you for you, you have to make sure he commits to you first. Sex should come after there's commitment, not before. Otherwise, you will get used, and it's not going to feel good. In your mind, you thought perhaps he really liked you, but he just wanted a good time. 
And guess what? This type of lifestyle will stick with you for the rest of your life because most guys don't think 304s are good marriage material. So ladies, enjoy your cats. And while I'm trying to move on from that, I don't know how to deal with dating now. Should I try to hide my past? Some people say that I should tell the guy that I'm not comfortable answering, but I feel like that would cause some concern as well. On social media, I see girls joking around saying divide your number by five, but I'm not gonna lie. So if that question comes up, I will always be honest. And while everyone says, don't worry, you'll eventually find a guy who won't care about your past, I've been waiting for that guy for almost a year. So she seems to want to stay honest about her past, but I wonder how much longer that's gonna last. So as you can see, sleeping around is really not good for women, even in the short term and most definitely not in the long term. But I wouldn't suggest this kind of life for men either, mostly because of the gynocentric injustice system. If you as a man just hooked up with a girl and she regrets it the next day, she has the power to falsely accuse you of sexual assault. I made a video about this very thing called guilty until proven innocent. Now that we've established what the problems with female promiscuity are, and now that we cleared the air on this whole stud versus slut that feminists complain about, it is now time to talk about the actual double standards in dating. And that is the fact that a woman is allowed to have a huge laundry list of unreasonable expectations that she wants the man to have. But if a man has so much as one expectation of the woman, he is shunned and labeled as a sexist. Now let me be clear here. I understand and expect women to have more expectations than men. After all, when it comes to mate selection, women are biologically more picky. Men, quite a bit less so. But it has been taken to such a crazy extreme. In a previous video, we looked at Heather's list, for example. Now that's definitely a more extreme case, but nevertheless, women still hold high standards for men. And they can afford to be picky, especially with all the options that dating apps have afforded to them. She can swipe left on you if she didn't like the shorts you were wearing, or if you're not tall enough. In fact, many girls have no remorse in body shaming men over factors that they can't control, like height. Like guys are not as shallow as girls. Like don't get me wrong, guys can be shallow and guys can be harsh. But most guys aren't as shallow and harsh as girls. Like, girls, we have some, like, image in our brain of this, like, perfect-looking guy who has, like, a six-pack and a perfect tan and, like, the most amazing f***ing hairdo and, like, has, like, the most cute clothes ever and, like, has a bunch of money and a nice car and all this shit. And it's like, not every guy is like that. How do you expect to ever find a good guy when you're looking for a dude back? Another thing to keep in mind about girls' strict dating rules is that if they are going to have such harsh rules, they should at least be consistent with them. If they did that, then they would see just how unreasonable they are. Because quite frankly, nobody on this planet could possibly check all her boxes. Therefore, she doesn't have these rules for everyone. These rules are just for guys with average looks. These rules do not apply to Chad's and Tyrone's. So not only is there a double standard between men and women on what dating expectations should be, but there is a double standard in which type of men that the women apply their standards to. Now this would be the list that most guys would have. Don't be a land whale. Oh my god, you're fat phobic. Um, no, fat, unlike height, can be controlled. And you should be losing weight for the sake of your own health anyway. Rabble, rabble, healthy in every size, rabble. Um, okay, next criteria. Don't be the town's slut. Oh my god, now you're slut shaming. No, just like she had the choice to sleep around in her college years, I have the choice to not want to settle down and marry her. Rabble, rabble. Free choice only applies to women, rabble. And lastly, I'm not taking care of someone else's kid. That's it. He's gone too far. We have to dox him now. <sighs> and God forbid, if you're the type of guy who wants a traditional woman, watch out. All right, let me ask you a question. Is this the kind of woman you want? Someone who lives only to, to cook for you and clean for you and wait on you hand and foot? God, you make it sound so negative. Take a look at NFL quarterback Cam Newton, for example. A woman for me is handling your own, but knowing how to cater to a man's needs, right? And I think a lot of times when you get that aesthetic of like, I'm a boss, like I'm a this, I'm a dad. No, baby, like, but you can't cook. Okay. You don't know, you don't know when to be quiet. You don't know how to allow a man to lead. Now he said nothing wrong at all. All he said was a woman should know how to cook and basically not chew his ear off. But in today's Western society, what he said was tantamount to treason. If you as a man have any expectations of what you're looking for in a partner, you're shunned. Men want a partner who's supportive and catering to his needs? You have some nerve. Look at some of the reactions to what Cam said. True colors always reveal themselves, time and again. I prefer to keep negativity off my feed, but this is disgusting. 
no need to be quiet here. Based on this, I'd argue Cam is the one who doesn't know when to be quiet. Sounds like it's my turn to sound off about men who can't pass or win a Super Bowl. Ironic, isn't it? A woman can turn a man down because of his height and body shame him. If, in turn, a man asks anything of a woman, then he's scum. Well, guess what? You can learn to cook and you can learn to keep quiet. You can't learn to be taller. Yet somehow men are seen as the unreasonable ones. Women love to impose standards on everybody except themselves. Everybody else has to cater to them. You're just lucky to be in their presence. How dare you have any expectations of women? This kind of mentality that most modern Western women have, that is the real double standard in dating. Before I end this video, I'd like to play you a clip of another female who realizes that the hoe phase is really not all what it's cracked up to be. You might have heard of the sex exodus occurring where men are checking out of the market, deciding women aren't worth the hassle, and I don't blame them. Third wave feminism is cucking all of us. Responsible society is not going out and getting married at 20 anymore. Instead, we're in college binge drinking and getting into debt, then in the workforce paying off our debt and paying income tax while irresponsible unmarried people are reproducing like rabbits and receiving our tax dollars in the form of welfare. The result? Welfare queens, fatherless kids, and childless women in the workplace pushing 35, all crying themselves to sleep every night. There's so much conflicting information everywhere. Go to college, have a career, sleep around like men do. He's too tired. I'm, and then I pretend I'm tired, but I'm not tired. I'm not tired. I'm not tired. That's why every girl needs those big college years to experiment. Get out of your system. Find out what you like. That leaves you about three years to find the man of your dreams, get married, and have one child before you're barren. Well, you know what I say? That. There's an obvious reason why women are so unhappy right now. Sleeping around is psychologically unhealthy, and it's screwing up society because men can get all the benefits of what used to be marriage and commitment with a few texts. Hey, want to come over and watch Netflix? It's so common, it's become a millennial dating cliche. Statistically, promiscuity doesn't make men happier either, but it's worse for women because a bunch of bonding hormones get released when we have sex and seriously screws with our decision making. Indeed, and some girls learn this stuff the easy way and some learn it the hard way. You know the phrase, don't start what you can't finish? That applies here. You can never just finish your hoe phase because it's not just a phase. Once a hoe, always a hoe. It doesn't matter if you stopped engaging in casual one night flings because that was still a part of your past and you can't change your past. Once you've made your bed, you now have to lie in it. So since there is no way to finish a hoe phase, you're much better off not starting one in the first place. And that about does it for this video, and until next time, I'm out.